Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to take an updated look at RPCS3 and its emulation of Red Dead Redemption. In recent days and weeks, they have released several builds that not only improve this game's performance, but how it renders its graphics. Let's jump straight across to my desktop and take a look at this new emulator build. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the settings I'm using. Come to configure, I'm using LLVM recompiler, I'm using ASM JIT recompiler, and I'm using my preferred SPU threads of 5. I am also only loading this library with enable thread schedule and enable SPU loop detection also enabled. Coming across the GPU, I'm using Vulkan as my renderer, and I'm using my 980 Ti to render all of my graphics. Now I have anisotrophic filtering disabled and my frame limit completely turned off. I am rendering at 720p and I have also upscaled this to 4K so a 300% resolution scale. I have also been told to disable vertex cache even though previously I was told to turn it on so yeah let's just uh, save our settings and actually load our game, load our cache and see exactly how the game is running. You can keep an eye on the performance number in the top left hand corner that is going to show you what our frame rate is like. So I'm probably going to speed up this section and just get us through all of these loading screens and actually get us into game. So already you can see that the uh, the shadow issue we were having with the previous build is pretty much gone. Well, I wouldn't say it's completely gone, but it's much, much better. So let's just speed through this loading screen. Once again, I'm going to speed up the footage and get us into our first rendered in-game cutscene. The game actually looks really really good. I know we are pretty much rendering it at 4k resolution but the shadow issues we were having you can see it's kind of affecting the boat there a little bit but they have fixed quite a few of the bugs. We are actually getting much much higher frame rates as well. We were getting about 5 or 6 FPS in my previous video that we looked at this game. Um, when we come across this bridge it is going to slow down but it's not actually slow down if you get my meaning. The game is meant to kind of go into slow motion here. It's meant to provide a kind of dramatic effect I guess. We can also see that the rendering of the shadows and shading is much better even though we do still have some issues. I'm pretty sure that that shadow culling is a deliberate implementation by the developers of RPCS3 in order to actually debug some of the other graphical issues that the game was having. Regardless of the culling though the game, the game does look quite good and you can see that lighting on player characters and on the environment is much improved over previous iterations of this emulator. So we still have these weird issues with the text when it gets rendered in. It leaves kind of an imprint on the screen. I'm not really sure what causes that and it's not really too much of an issue to be honest. Even if that was present, it doesn't really affect the playability of the game. And to be honest, they'll probably fix it fairly soon considering the progress that these guys are making on this emulator at this stage. So performance wise, we are actually getting much, much better frame rates over the last time I ran this. Not only that, but our rendered Graphics are much, much better, shadows are much, much better, um, shading on the character models is much, much better, and um, the culling that they had introduced in previous versions is much improved. So there we go, Red Dead Redemption confirmed. So um, yeah, let's just continue along and see how our game is performing. And the thing I mostly want to see is, is the game going to crash, as I have been given some tips on how to make the game not crash once we pass the train tracks in the later stage of this intro sequence. So um, I'm very interested to see if that will actually work for me. We're going to see the shadow culling coming into effect once again once this train pulls away from this station. Let's just wait for it and see if it still happens. Yep, there we go. Once the player character moves away from the camera at a certain distance, the shadows are all going to stop being rendered. So I'm just gonna skip this cutscene because I realistically don't want you guys to have to wait through every single one of these cutscenes because they're pretty much the same every time we watch them. So let's just skip this and continue on to when we are trying to get to the saloon. So here we are, we're back in game and as you can clearly see the shadows and everything is rendered much much better. We're getting much better performance. When I look out to the desert you can see that the light rays are now well, that was weird. It kind of stopped rendering the train for a second, but the lighting is a lot better. They fixed some issue with what they officially call it is alpha glow. So you can see when we come into this house, we were previously having an issue where the house would basically be illuminous to the point of blinding, but it's now much, much better. And when we look down the street, we can see that our little horsey friends are no longer glowing a strange orange color. 
Now, when we actually look at the performance difference between my previous look at this emulator and this game, the performance is much, much improved. Previously, when I looked into this area, I was getting 4, 5 and 6 FPS, whereas now I'm getting 12. And when I look into the busiest part of the town, I'm now getting like 8, 9 FPS instead of the previous 3 and 4 FPS. So yeah, let's just continue on towards the saloon, our next rendered cutscene, and see exactly how far we can actually progress in the game now without it fully crashing on us. So we are now indoors again, which means the return of the weird lighting. And there we go, we have our strange orangey, yellowish kind of weird lighting. Hopefully they can fix that soon enough, and hopefully they can um, improve the performance a little bit as well. Like, not that I can really complain, considering this game hasn't been in, in the in-game section of the compatibility guide for that long. And when you consider that performance, even in the past two or three weeks, has... I wouldn't say doubled for me, but it has probably gone up by like about 30%, which is a fairly decent performance increase in any game or any emulator in my eyes. So again, we have some of these massive sound issues that we are always going to experience when we're not running at 100% game speed. Um, the sound of the train pulling away is fairly horrendous. I, um, I have it turned down so you guys aren't completely deafened, but it's actually deafening right now. So let's just try to continue to follow Jake to our horses and get out of the town and try to see if this little crash fix trick or whatever you want to call it is going to work for us. Now, a lot of people say that they crash in this exact area, that when they interact with their horse, their game will crash. Um, I haven't seen that too much, so let's just get on our horse. Thankfully, this horse is no longer radioactive like it was in previous builds. Um, so this trick to stop the game from crashing apparently is you have to exit the town and then you just have to wait for the train to pull away. So you need to wait for the train to get to a safe distance because apparently it's the train that's actually causing the game to crash. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull up beside Jake and I'm gonna press R1 to stop my horse and then I'm going to wait for the train to actually pull away and then we are going to see if the game will crash as soon as we pass the second set of train tracks. So I'm probably going to just speed this footage up and let's just pan the camera around while we're waiting for the train to actually pull away and be at a safe distance from our player character. So hopefully that's far enough, let's just continue along and see if our game is going to crash. So it's not this set of train tracks that the game usually crashes at, it is the next one and 99% of the time the game would crash and if it didn't crash at that same area it would crash within probably about five seconds of getting past the train tracks so um yeah let's just let's just see can we actually get past this area for once so here we go this is where it usually crashes and it didn't crash but let's just wait a few seconds and see if it crashes And there we go, this is pretty much the furthest I have ever gotten into this game without actually using a game save. So um, yeah, that's actually, that's pretty cool. So if you wait for the train to actually go away, it doesn't cause your game to crash for some reason. So I guess that's a useful piece of information if you're trying to crash fix a game or find out exactly what's causing it to crash. So confirmed, trains cause Red Dead Redemption to crash. So let's just continue along and see exactly how long the game is going to run before it does crash. And since I was expecting it to crash at this point, or at some point before this, uh, I'm just going to shut up and let the gameplay play out. I'm probably going to speed up the footage at some point at this stage. So yeah, I'm just going to sit back, play the game, see how far I can actually progress before we get a game crash or before the emulator stops working. Um, yeah, so I'm going to shut up and if the game crashes or if we get to the next cutscene, I'll just chime back in. Okay, so we are at the next cutscene, something that I wasn't expecting to happen to be honest. So we're now at Fort Mercer and we're getting 16, 17, 11, 10 FPS, which is not is not terrible. That's like, I'm guessing, is it, well, it's a third of the performance since this game is a 30 FPS game. The sound is, where we part is still a little buggy as you can hear, but it's not horrendous. It's, it's audible. So yeah, I'm going to speed up the game footage, I think again, unless something crazy happens or some graphical issue happens. And um, we're going to see, yeah, we're going to see once again how far we can progress before the game crashes. Because I'm, I literally don't know how it hasn't crashed before this, to be honest. So let's speed up the footage once again and I guess wait to see if the game is going to actually crash on us. 
Okay, so we are at another cutscene and the game still hasn't crashed, so I'm guessing it's a good sign, but um, I'm still very surprised that it hasn't crashed, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna once again speed up the footage and we could be here all day. Let's hope we're not here all day. Okay, so we have finally gotten a texture corruption crash. Uh, I'll try to skip it. Sometimes if you press the X button to skip the cutscene while it's happening, it'll fix it. And no, it doesn't appear to have done anything. The only thing that it has achieved is to completely freeze the emulator out. I can't do any actions in the emulator and I actually am going to have to force close it in order to get it to do anything or to become responsive again. So yeah, guys. Um, that's an updated look, I guess, at Red Dead Redemption on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. So let me know down in the comments if there are any other PlayStation 3 games you would like me to test. Uh, I am currently testing The Last of Us, which is kind of buggy, but kind of works in a way, so expect a video on that. Um, I'm also testing Persona 5, so there's no need to comment Persona 5 if you want me to test that game. Um, so yeah, once again, guys, cheers for checking out the video. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.